Hi everyone. I'm going to try to teach you how to georeference images using um, QGIS. QGIS is a free software that you can download. And the, the first thing that we need to, to use the QGIS is to put, because just in the moment that you download the, the code, so the, the program, you don't have um, tools to, to georeference, no? So in order to, to have those tools, we are going to Google um, X, Y, Z, tiles, tiles for QGIS. Here, but well, I have it in Spanish. I think it's, even if it's Spanish, it's, it's pretty easy. I will put the, the link. And here you have the X, X, Y, Z tiles. And here you have a list of many, many uh, places where you can get um, different maps. I'm going to add a new one just to, to show you how, how it works. So first of all, I'm going to get the, the satellite imagery. I copy the URL like it is. I go here to XYZ tiles, new connection. Sorry, it's, it's in Spanish, but the menu is more or less the same. S3 sat, and that's enough. I accept, and now I have these new these new maps now of satellite images of the world. Then what we need is the the georeferencer. We go to raster, geo georeferencer. In English, you will see this icon, and then you get this here. Some people don't get it there get in a different window. Yeah, this is really uncomfortable, so I don't recommend you that. So go to configuration, configure, reference <laughs> and that is added to the window. I don't like it to have it in, in this side. I like it to move it on the right side. So I will put here my image, and here will, this will be my map. Then I choose an image, for example, let's do one image from Kiev or, yeah, if I remember correctly, this is Kiev. Not, no, I think this was nearly just before the war. And uh, we can put, first of all, the world roads to put the names and go to, to Kiev. Hmm. Ukraine, Kiev, here. Oh, I was thinking maybe this is not Kiev. Yeah, no, this is not Kiev. Let's check another, another image. Let's say Ankara. Okay. Now we choose to go to Ankara. Okay. Here we have Ankara. Um, sometimes it's easier to do it with OpenStreetMap because you see better the roads, the highways. That is what, what is easier to see on the ISS images. OK, here we have Ankara. In, in this case, it's, it's quite well um, oriented. 
And obviously one of the issues is that in the in the image is the whole highway is lit and not in the reality. But that should not be a big issue. The first thing that we should do is try to identify three places on the image and put points on those. So here we put the first point. Then we zoom out and we try to put a second one. Uh, let's double check if this one was this one. This one probably is this other one. Okay. And a third one can be following this here. Oh, yeah, we, we have missed one thing. I'm sorry, I have to go remove the points that I have just done because I, I made one mistake. The, the projection that we, we use in Cities at Night is the um, global projection. Projection is not, not going to be much difference, but the, the difference is at the end that we have the coordinates of the places on uh, latitude and longitude, and, and, and that's how we work basically because it's, it's pretty similar to the astronomical coordinates and are the, the natural coordinates. If it's needed, we can, can transform no? from one to the other one. But So you see what I'm doing. I'm going to the places. I have activated this bit and I just go to the place and click first on the image and then on the map. And then put in my first three points. And once I have done my first three points, I go here to the yellow wheel. Uh, I usually work on theme plate splines, but you can choose other projections, although the theme plate splines, in my opinion, is is best. And after that, I play, um, and I, I, I it, this is how the, the image is georeferenced. Then, to link both the georeferencer and the, the problem, the map, I click here in this in these two icons and now when I zoom in and zoom out I get very close to where where I want. So now I want to to add here because we see by activating and disactivating the the area so the, the image we see that there is this here an offset. So I want to put a point here to improve the georeferencation. And I'm going to put it here in this purple light. There. OK. Then I press play again. And the new image fits way better than the previous one. My recommendation is not put points for putting points and having hundreds and hundreds of points. That's really bad because more points makes more harder to for the computer to process the image and warp the image. So what I recommend is to to check the differences no in between the image and the and the map and only point put points in those places where the the difference is obvious. For example, here we see there is quite of an offset. Except 
sometimes we can try to 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 put more points even if we don't still have how how we look in general what we need to put is spread the points as much on on the image so here is also an offset it's quite far from the from the other location and we press play and now we see how the image fits way way better than before after a few points is we really need to to zoom in to check whenever is differences because the fit differences obviously are getting smaller And in general, for high resolution images, I don't recommend more than 20 points, but those points should be well, well spread through the whole image. See, now that we are far from the from the points that we used, now the, the difference is way larger. One, one recommendation is, is don't try to be perfect, just try to put points. And uh, if you make a mistake, you will see it when you blink, no? when you check before and after. No? And, and it's always better to, to try to, to get more approximated than just having it absolutely perfect everywhere is because then then can be difficult now to sometimes to to find exactly the the location that we want to 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 do no like here i don't know probably this crossing is here but i i, I don't see it perfectly so i'm going to put it here and i'm guessing a little bit and let's see how it looks oh now, now it's, now it's better. I don't recommend to use uh, buildings as a reference. I recommend you to put uh, the links on crossings or in isolated sources. Yeah, because buildings depends a lot on the perspective and uh, that it, it will be right or not. So this is this is already one one nice example. We can check. Uh, we can continue as much as we want adding more and more uh, points. Obviously, more points, the better. But as I said, uh, we should not try to put hundreds, uh, 20. So for example, right now, I already have nine. Um, sometimes the map don't help us. Um, it's better that we use the the satellite images. And now it's it's way better. And like this, it's like a video game. No? Imagine that you are delivering um, humanitarian aid. No? In a way it is, no? because imagine that we had an image of um, an area that had an earthquake, no? like in, in Turkey. Now, so with the nighttime data that uh, we can see what is which areas have been turned off. Uh, but if we had even higher resolution images like the ISS, uh, because viewers cannot see uh, on, see on this resolution, um, but we can more accurately tell what, what's going on no? in, 
in that area because we have higher resolution. Okay, now I'm happy with my image. And what I will do is to save the data in points format. And you don't need to send us the image. You only need to send us this, this file. In the case that you want to reuse some of the, um, the data points that the volunteers of City at Night did, I will add a script to uh, transform the data points that our volunteers made to the format of QGIS. But um, just to tell, uh, this this format is is also first of all for the is is the format of the global mapper, and Esri has a different format, so I have no point on on making uh, something standard. But QGIS is for free, not like global mapper, and. Um, and that's why we are putting there these, these scripts to transform from global mapper to to QGIS um, or the other way. Uh, for us, it's the same that you give us the format of global mapper or QGIS. So, oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's basically the same. I hope this will be useful for all of you. Bye.